Joseph Scrimshaw, and he's coming to the stage right now. Hey, -o! Thank you. Thank you very, very much. I have never in the history of my career followed a master sergeant. It's very, very difficult. I always like to observe uh, when I'm sitting in the audience where I'm going to perform and what unique opportunities it might create for me, and this is very special because I feel like if you're looking at me from exactly the right angle, you will see wings coming out of my buttocks. <laughs> that is very, very lovely for me. Um, now nothing I say needs to be funny because you can just fly away in your mind. Uh, my name is Joseph Scrimshaw. I wanted to just uh, tell you a little bit about myself. Like, like Dawn mentioned, uh, I am originally from Minnesota. I feel like there are many, many things in Minnesota to be proud of. But my personal favorite is that the educational video game, Oregon Trail, was actually invented in Minnesota. Yes, yes. And that is, it's just a huge source of pride. Because that is a video game that is all about leaving Minnesota. It's a video game about people who are so desperate to leave Minnesota, they would rather die of dysentery. So it's, it warms my heart. Uh, about two years ago, I did leave Minnesota. I moved here to Los Angeles, and, and now I live in Hollywood, or as I like to think of it, the world capital of tiny dogs and syphilis yeah. billboards. <laughs> Just so you know, babies come out of a hole. Oh. <laughs> and I pictured babies actually like crawling their way out of the earth. Like little demons that are just here to scream on airplanes. Uh, and I was terrified. So then she decided to clarify what she meant and she made it even worse. <laughs> She said, uh, ba babies don't just come out of any hole. They come out of a hole that is near a woman's legs. <laughs> near a woman's legs is not a lie, but it's not exactly true either. A baby comes out of a hole near a woman's legs is like the sex ed talk that Dumbledore would give to Harry Potter. <laughs> Sounds kind of magical, but it's obviously BS at the same time. Not exactly. Your sister would enjoy that one in her college course about Harry Potter. Uh, so she decided to keep telling me about the, the, the whole near woman's leg. She kept saying near, and I got older and I realized that she was just being shy and couldn't bring herself to be, say, in between. But when she said near to me, when I was very young and very geeky and a huge fan of science fiction and comic books, I imagined that the whole was not even a part of the woman's body. That a portal in time and space just opened near a woman's legs. And just kind of floated around at crotch level. And then sometimes, without warning, a baby would fall out. And I thought, poor women, they always need to be ready. Just in case a portal in time and space opens near their crotch and a baby falls out. They gotta catch that before it hits the ground. Poor, poor women. Uh, so my mom still says some weird things to me. Uh, back then it was all about where babies come from and now it's mostly about when babies are coming. She bugs me a lot about uh, when I'm gonna have children and my wife and I are not sure if we actually want to have children. We had a conversation about it and we said we should set aside some time to have a serious discussion 
about whether or not we want to have children. And that was two years ago. <laughs> so I feel like that's kind of telling me something. Uh, I'm concerned that I wouldn't actually be a great father. I've actually spent a lot of time around children because I've done a lot of children's theater. Uh, for many years, I did a children's theater show in New Richmond, Wisconsin. <laughs> Thanks, Don. Uh, <laughs> Yay! Midwest references. Uh, the show is called The Legend of Johnny Appleseed. By applause, how many people are aware of Johnny Appleseed? Just sort of call it. Okay. So people know about Johnny Appleseed. I didn't even get to play Johnny Appleseed. I played Johnny's silly friend, Bill. And I was made to wear like uh, overalls and long underwear, full body long underwear that had the hole in the back for historically accurate defecation. Uh, and the show is set in 1850s Wisconsin, but for some reason, we all had to speak in these weird kind of Southern accents. So I had a lot of weird lines like, well, gosh and golly, Johnny, what you gonna do with all them apples? And even as I was saying it, I was like vaguely offended by myself. I didn't even know why I was offended, but it wasn't Southern. It had nothing to do with Wisconsin. It was just sort of like, I bet this is how idiots talked a long time ago. There was nothing about this show that was historically accurate. Uh, I used to describe it to my friends as a collection of apple-based lies. Because <laughs> here is the story of the show. Johnny Appleseed had a dream to walk around the countryside helping people plant apple trees. So he did. The end. <laughs> that was the show. This is the actual truth of Johnny Appleseed. He did walk the countryside helping people plant apple trees, but these trees only bore bitter, inedible fruit that was only good for making hard alcoholic cider. <laughs> and the only reason he even did that is he wanted to hand out his pamphlets for his religion. Uh, Johnny was a sweet Borgian, and that is a real religion. It is not just the sound the Swedish chef from the Muppets make if you hit him in the nuts. <laughs> Sweet Borgian is an actual religion. And one of the things that Johnny believed because of this religion was that if he never had sex on earth, he would have as many wives as he wanted in heaven. So the true legend of Johnny Appleseed is that he was a sexually repressed religious zealot who planted alcohol trees. <laughs> I begged to tell that story, but the truth was kept from the children. It made me very mad. Uh, but I discovered uh, I was concerned about performing in front of kids because I'd always done like late night naughty comedy with lots of booze. And uh, I discovered I enjoy performing for the kids. Uh, my role of Johnny Silly Friend Bill, I got to do a bunch of big pratfalls and there are parts of the show where I just shook my ass at the audience and the children would laugh unless they were bored. If they were bored, they would let you know in some subtle way, like shouting, oh God, I'm bored now. <laughs> and I discovered the joy of performing for a very honest audience with no filter whatsoever. And before the show, I would get to do warm-ups with the kids and I would come out and I would ask them if they liked apples, like it was a rock concert would come out and say, do you like apples? And they would lose their little minds. Like, yeah! <laughs> There'd always be like one kid in the back who would say, actually, I'm allergic to apples. <laughs> and no one listened or cared because it's fall in Wisconsin and you like apples or you can get the F out. That's, you have to like apples. Uh, and we would lead them in little warm-ups uh, to try to train them how to behave during the show. There was a question where they were supposed to answer listen. So we would ask them, what should you guys in the audience do when the actors on stage are talking? And one time a child yelled out, close my eyes and think of a better time. <laughs> Wonderful, honest response. I can relate to that. Uh, and at the end of every show, uh, we would get to greet all the kids as they left the theater and got on the bus. We'd stand out there on the sidewalk, the kids would get on the bus, and at the time, every kid had Spider-Man somewhere on their person. So I would just compliment their Spider-Man attire. So the kids would walk by and say, bye, I like your Spider-Man shirt, bye, I like your Spider-Man hat, bye, I like your Spider-Man asthma inhaler. And then I just, I 
just found myself in a place of joy, and I just wasn't really thinking at all. And a kid walked by with a just amazing Spider-Man watch. Like, I wanted it for myself as an adult. And then I heard myself say to this child, Wow-ee! That's one awesome bleeping Spider-Man watch! <laughs> but I did not say bleeping. I said an adult word. And by adult word, I mean swearing. I don't mean like I said mortgage. <laughs> Or fiduciary. <laughs> fiduciary is a great F word, but I said the more classic F word aloud to a child. So I immediately looked around to see if any of the adults had heard, and luckily they hadn't, but the child had. <laughs> and he stopped and he, he stared up at me for a, like a long time. And then he just said, I like it when you fall down. <laughs> And a part of me knew he meant, like, I like it when you fall down in the show, but it felt like what he was saying is, I know something's gone wrong in your life. <laughs> You're standing on a public sidewalk wearing overalls, speaking in a dumb southern accent, swearing at children about Spider-Man. But you know what? You made me laugh when you fell down, so maybe it was worth it. And maybe it effing was. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes. Oh my god. I, do you usually have people like over your shoulder just snorting and dying <laughs> during your comedy? Because that was impossible. not that I'm aware of. Yeah. Oh my mercy, Joseph. So here's the thing. Several things. One, uh, when are you gonna have a baby? Oh man! I know. I just. Um, I know that's what your mom would want to know, and I feel like I should advocate for. I think her. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go for fifty. I think I'll feel like fully settled and ready to pay attention to a child. Yeah. You know what like is 50. funny about that is that I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, but one of us has the luxury of waiting until fifty. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing: when I'm fifty, my wife will be forty-seven. I married younger, so hey. it'll be no problem. See, and I like a fool married younger too. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter because my uterus anyway um, but I also I got married last year too and that's the question I get is when is it happening and it I'm not really a maternal you might have picked this up already on your own uh, that I don't have the most maternal sort of aura and I'm not in my life prior to being married was that something anyone really asked me a lot like when are you gonna have kids because they didn't think I would and now I'm like Ooh. And you know how you said that there was a hole in your woman's legs where a baby came up? Yeah. Uh, I wasn't much more informed than you were about <laughs> that. And uh, even now, I've seen a couple documentaries. <laughs> and I've watched some like na nature shows. Yeah. And even the way it actually works is kind of sci-fi. Yeah, you know? it is. <laughs> like, I mean, I... It's, it's creepy. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. like all of your... You know, and the elbowing. That's the thing about waiting until you're a little bit older to have children. Like, when you're young, you could at least be a little ignorant. And now I, like, I've read every Facebook post. I know about every horrible thing that's going to happen. Right? Yeah, and my sisters do. And, like, there's something about waiting that people aren't nice to you. Like, if you're, you know, 19 and you're going to have a baby, people are like, oh, it's so great. Oh, you're going to... And now people are like, oh, the chances of autism go up like 75%. <laughs> oh, and you're never gonna bounce back. I mean, never. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah. But I think, but I think we can still go on with the show. I think we can still, I think we can still go on with the show. So you've been out here in LA for two years yep. and I, I introduced you as killing it. That's very nice of you. Because you, I, 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 unless you're just very good at pretending to kill it on the internet, but it <laughs> certainly looks like you're killing it. Tell us a little bit about what you've got coming up and some of your coolest stuff uh, going on. I do, I've got a monthly show that I do at Nerd Melt in Hollywood. Uh, Nerd Melt is in the back of a comic book store. Uh, and for me, the thought of like, I could do comedy in the back of a comic book store when I was a kid, it was like, that's a lie. That's impossible. <laughs> can't fly that close to the sun. So yeah, that's a... <laughs> It's very, very fun. This is kind of a lifelong. Yeah. Yeah, big deal. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's tons of fun. And it's, yeah, it's, I, I have always been a really uh, geeky guy. I've always liked comic books and Star Wars and everything. It's just amazing that the world bent to fit what I like. So, like, great. Now I can go and make Star Wars jokes in the back of a comic book store and people are happy. Great. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I am good at being positive on social media, which I do yes. think is actually important because it, it, I think it helps keep you positive. Like, I never lie, but I try to, like, be positive about the, the positive things that are going on in my life. Which is awesome. And there's so much. And you also do a podcast, right? Obsessed? I do a podcast, yeah. It's called Obsessed. It's on the Feral Audio Network. I just talked about to people about things that they like a lot, maybe too much. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, maybe well, you could do a homeschooling episode. I would love that. <laughs> See? This would be great. You could, you could probably, I understand you're qualified to teach the art class, at least. <laughs> that, much, that much seems to be, that seems like here's a red marker and all day. I spent $30,000 getting a degree in visual art. Anyone is qualified to Anyone's teach. Qualified. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And, and thus the wings out of your butt. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It was, it was all that. By the way, I should pause this art. These murals were painted by a muralist here in the park. Her name is Erin. Oh, cool. And she's very shy, and so she'll never agree to come on the show. I begged her to come and tell us all about it. She won't do it. But this is her wings and her dragon yeah, and awesome. a number of other things. She's remarkable. Um, she could maybe teach. I'm just saying we could, we could blend. We could combine forces. So I'm dying to know, then, the question. Yeah. Who? You got all day. Who I want? Yeah. Yep, you got all day to spend with anyone living or dead, real or fictional. Who would it be? And as a nerd, that's got it. That's yeah. Tough. I know it's it's hard. So I'm just gonna go with Johnny Appleseed. Uh, <laughs> explain yourself. I'll explain. Well, I, everything else is a hard decision. And yeah. Johnny Appleseed, I have wrestled with now for years. Like, what was he really like? Yeah. Was he just like a happy dummy just walking down the, the street, singing little songs, happily planting trees, or was he just? A weirdo. Like, I think he had to have been, like, a fascinating weirdo. Like, you know, sometimes you meet somebody and you go, like, oh, man, that, that, I just I want nothing to do with that person because they're a weirdo. And then you spend a little bit more time with them and, like, wow, there's a lot going on, yeah. you know? Oh, you could spend the rest of your life in this RV park. <laughs> we've, got, we've got wonderful weirdos coming out our eyes. And they come, it's like a mobile. They just keep coming and then they go and then more... More weirdos come through. That's awesome. I would have to say uh, that I would also like to meet Johnny Appleseed, yeah. but it wasn't true before. Now, so I will say, you're a big fan, Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then he's gonna ask us both when we're gonna have kids. And, yeah. yeah, and also I'd be like, and I want your pamphlet. I want to read about this religion of yours. It sounds intriguing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please give Joseph Scrimshaw another big Thank round. you. Thank you very much. Marvelous work. Thank you.